Welcome to PFT Tutor with Jeffrey Haynes. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons. It's greatly appreciated. You can subscribe right now by clicking on the icon in the right lower corner of the screen. In this video, we're going to review performing DLCO simulation using the Morgan Scientific Compass 2 software. And this will apply to systems with a rapid gas analyzer and the gas collection bags. Even if you're not using the Compass 2 software, I think there's some information here that you may find helpful. I previously published a video on my YouTube channel about how to perform DLCO simulation. Use this link to view that video. Traditionally, DLCO simulation was performed with an expensive Hans Rudolph double syringe device that required expensive tanks of precision gas. In addition, performing a DLCO simulation with this device isn't simple. It requires some experience and expertise. These devices are still in use, but mostly as part of QC required in research studies. However, the 2017 ERS ATS DLCO technical standards recommended a more simple and inexpensive method using a standard 3 liter calibration syringe. It is recommended that DLCO simulation should be performed weekly and as needed whenever a technical problem is suspected. The Morgan Scientific Compass 2 software and other manufacturers have a DLCO simulation mode in their software. And there's nothing wrong with that, but the ERS ATS standards recommend performing DLCO simulation in patient testing mode. I'm going to review how to do it both in patient testing mode and in QC mode. Uh, later in this video, I'm going to show an example of how patient testing mode may be superior in some situations. I use one dedicated 3 liter syringe to perform DLCO simulation on all three of our systems to minimize the effect of differences in the syringes. I'm not sure that's absolutely necessary, but it's just the way I do it. Uh, if you only have one PFT system, this won't be an issue for you. Ideally, the syringe used for DLCO simulation will not have a hose or a filter attached because you'll need to account for the added dead space. In the Compass 2 software, you can add the 3 liter syringe you're using for simulation into your clinic information. Just click on Tools at the top and then pick Configuration. Under clinic information, down at the bottom, you can just click on calibration syringes. Here you can add the serial number, uh, description of the syringe, and when it was last calibrated. I create a fake patient called DLCO Sim, or you can name it whatever you like. Uh, because I have three systems, I need three uh, different patients, so I just call them DLCO 1, 2, and 3. We track technologist proficiency data in the software. Uh, so because of this, we used to use a technologist called BioQC. So performing BioQC in simulations wouldn't impact the technologist proficiency data. You don't need to do that in Compass 2 because when you print out your proficiency reports, you can choose standard workflow. So when you're in doing BioQC or you're doing uh, DLC simulation, you can just pick BioQC workflow and they'll keep those uh, data separated. First, I'm going to show you how to perform DLCO simulation in patient testing mode, keeping in mind that this is the method recommended by the ERS ATS standards. When doing a DLCO simulation in patient testing mode, you're first going to need to do a vital capacity. You can do slow vital capacity or forced vital capacity with the syringe. I use the slow vital capacity, and you'll do it the same way that you would do it with a patient. One of the things that you're going to notice is when you do this, the 3 liter syringe is going to read 3.3 liters. And that's because it's converted to BTPS, which is usually around 1.1. So if you do this and it doesn't come out at 3.3 liters, if it's way off, and you're doing this as a troubleshooting exercise, you may have found your problem. Once you've performed your vital capacity, you're going to perform a DLCO exactly as you would with a patient. So how do you know if your results are acceptable? The 2017 ERS ATS DLCO standards say that the simulated DLCO should be less than 0.5 mLs per minute per millimeter of mercury, and the simulated alveolar volume should be 3 liters plus or minus 300 mL under BTPS conditions. However, this is an error in the standards because the gas is not at body temperature, and because it's coming out of the tank, it's completely dry so it should be reported under ATPD conditions. Because we are performing the DLCO simulation in patient testing mode, the VA will be reported under BTPS conditions, so we're going to need to convert that to ATPD. So the easy way to convert BTPS back to ATPD under normal conditions is 
just to take the value and multiply it by 0.91. So in this example, our alveolar volume is 3.42 liters. We multiply that by 0.91. That gives us 3.11 liters. The syringe dead space is 100 mL. So if we subtract the 0.1 liters from the 3.11, that gives us a simulated alveolar volume of 3.01 liters, which is very close to our target. In Compass 2, you can also use the QC mode for performing DLCO simulation. All you need to do is click on the QC mode button shown by the red arrow. After you click Start Test, this window will pop open and it will ask you to choose whether you're going to perform the simulation with a Hans Rudolph double syringe device or use a standard syringe. If you have entered your syringe information into your clinic information, click on the little black arrow that's inside the red circle here. After you click on the black arrow, you can select which syringe you're using for the simulation. In QC mode, you won't have to do a simulated vital capacity first. You can go straight away and do the DLCO simulation. The alveolar volume will be reported ATPD. Um, if you added the syringe uh, dead space to your clinic information, that will be accounted for. And you can tell if a simulation had been done in the QC mode by the little icon on the right that I've highlighted with a red rectangle. As I mentioned earlier, the ERS ATS technical standards recommend that DLCO simulation be performed in patient testing mode. Well, it's certainly easier to do it and quicker to do it in QC mode. So is there a downside to performing DLCO simulation outside of patient testing mode? Now I'm going to share a case with you in which performing DLCO simulation in patient testing mode and QC mode yielded uh, very different results. Um, this was a pulmonary function test done on a patient. The technologist uh, recognized that there was a disparity between the TLC at 6.11 liters from plethysmography and the alveolar volume uh, from DLCO was 4.16 liters. Now, you can see gaps between the VA and the TLC, but usually you'll see that in patients with very severe obstruction uh, emphysema because the DLCO test gas doesn't ventilate all of the uh, lung volume. However, this patient had normal spirometry. You can see that the FEV1 to FVC ratio is 67%. Yes, it's lower than the gold 0.7, but it's statistically normal with a Z-score of minus 0.96. So this made the uh, technologist suspicious that it was a problem, and she started to do some troubleshooting measures. The first troubleshooting measure the technologist did was a DLCO simulation in QC mode. And as you can see, the DLCO is within the expected range, less than 0.5, and the VA is almost perfectly at 3 liters. Still suspicious that there may be a problem, the technologist performed a biological control test on herself, and found that her DLCO was a little lower than usual. Now, we use a three standard deviation range for quality control, so technically a Z-score of minus 2.44 is within an acceptable range. However, it was a little unusual for her. Her VA, however, was way out of range with a Z-score of minus 5.44, so over five standard deviations away from her mean, indicating that there is a problem with the system. The next thing we did was a repeat DLCO simulation, but this time we did it in patient testing mode. As you can see, the DLCO is still acceptable at 0.12, it's less than 0.5, and the VA at 2.86 is certainly below our target of 3 liters. However, it is within the ERS ATS range of 3 liters plus or minus 300 mLs. Even though the simulated alveolar volume was within the ERS ATS ranges, it was outside of our range. A z-score of minus 3.14 is outside of three standard deviations. As it turns out, the problem we found wouldn't be detected by performing DLCO simulation in the QC mode. So if you're going to use the QC mode, I recommend that you also be familiar in doing the DLCO simulation in patient testing mode. I highly recommend that laboratories generate their own ranges based on two or three standard deviations when plotting DLCO simulation data because it will often be tighter than the ERS ATS standards. This is especially true when assessing the simulated alveolar volume. As shown here in this Levy Jennings plot, the ERS ATS limits, depicted by the solid black lines, 
are around six standard deviations away from the recorded mean. So you could have a definite problem with your system and still be within the ERS ATS limits. This was a case report we had published in the European Respiratory Journal supporting the idea that a three standard deviation range may be better than the arbitrary ERS ATS limits. There were three simulated alveolar volume measurements that were much higher than usual. The data were around six standard deviations outside of the usual values, but they were still acceptable according to the ERS ATS standards. A leak was discovered in one of the collection bags and once that was replaced, the simulated alveolar volume went back within three standard deviations of the mean. Key points, DLCO simulation can be easily performed in the Morgan Scientific Compass 2 software. DLCO simulation should be done weekly and as needed if a malfunction is suspected. Performing DLCO simulation in the QC mode is less time consuming, but there may be some situations where patient testing mode is better. Simulated DLCO should be less than 0.5 ml per minute per millimeter mercury. The simulated alveolar volume should be 3 liters plus or minus 300 ml under ATPD conditions. However, as I've shown, using a plus or minus 3 standard deviation range may be more appropriate than the ERS ATS ranges. Thank you for watching PFT Tutor with Jeffrey Haynes. Please click the like, subscribe, and notification buttons, and we'll see you next time.